Okay guys, today we have this uh, 32 inch TV. This is a TCL model 32S as in Sam 321. And I know you guys are probably saying, damn big dog, time's getting hard, that's all you got? Working on 32 inches now? Uh, actually, uh, no, times aren't getting hard. Please. I have a no. And like I said, it probably does have less screws. And like you know, unlike the 60 and 65 inches, it's probably a little bit easier to take apart, uh, especially if you're going to change the LEDs. And I think this is what we have here. Um, as you can see, I have it plugged in in my isolation transformer over here. Okay, and there's a white light on the bottom, which means the TV is in standby. And I'm going to go hit the power button, which is located up under right behind the white light there just feel for it, you'll feel it the light should blink as you can see it's blinking and you can actually see without even putting my light on it I don't know if you can see that or not look at that okay I don't even need my light as you can see it is on there's absolutely no backlight on the TV Okay, um, if it's standing far away from me, you probably can't see, but I'm actually going to put my light on it, so you can see it better. Okay, so the picture is very, very dark. So, uh, unfortunately, yes, once again, we have a backlight problem. Okay, just to verify the model number of this TV, we're going to look at the sticker and you're going to be amazed. Um, as you can see, it says service number, it's a 32S321TBAA. And if you look right up under the barcode there, you can see when it was manufactured. This is only manufactured in 2018 of October less than two years old okay so unfortunately guys this is what kind of televisions we're working with today uh, you guys have those TVs that like five six seven years old and you paid like you know 700 800 bucks for you know don't buy this new shit if you do spend some freaking money and get something name brand okay uh, and make sure that you do this is my advice to everyone that buys a new TV make sure that you buy a TV and wherever you're buying it from make sure it's a you know a nice outlet store where they do offer the warranty in the store such as Best Buy get an extended warranty I'm telling you because if you don't two or three years you know they give you a year warranty when you buy it from the manufacturer but I can guarantee you any new TV that you buy now uh, about 40 to 50 percent of them are going to fail have some type of failure within the first four years okay and if it's under warranty if they cannot fix it they're gonna have to give you another one and then in most cases um, <laughs> they don't want the old one back so I'm gonna leave that said and done I'm in that right there right but yeah so that's what we're dealing with nowadays with these cheaper sets you know don't go buy a, don't get rid of your old Samsung uh, you know TV and go buy some, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, you know what I'm saying, like a, a Insignia or, or some other off-brand. Um, TCL is good. I like the way the uh, inter the user interface is nice on it. Um, as far as it being a smart TV, um, but other than that, uh, the way these TVs are made, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna get what you pay for. So pretty much. So think about that when you go buy a TV, a 60-inch TV, you only pay 3.99 for it. Yeah, think about that. Okay. Anyway, let's see what's going on with this TV. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the feet. Okay, there's our two screws on each one. Okay, so we'll just pull those off. Okay, now that we've removed our feet first, 
I see there's some screws in the back, not that many of course, it's like one, two, three, four, five, and six on the end here, and there's nothing on the bottom. I usually always check that now, and we'll see what happens. Obviously, it looks like this piece on top comes off first. Of course, we have our one board wonder. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And let's see if we can get this bottom piece to come off. Okay, so this is our plug here uh, for our LEDs, and I'm going to check it with my meter. I just unplugged it, and let's see what kind of read I'm going to get. I'm going to go red to red and black to black. I'm, I'm sorry, black to white. Went up to 51 volts, but I still don't see any backlight. Okay, um, through the back of the TV. Nothing is lit up. Oh, I do see a little bit. Okay, so keep in mind that this TV, when I first got it, it did come on and cut off for about, after about five minutes, it cut off. So I'm just going to see if we get any voltage coming up uh, when I turn it on and if it goes back down then we know that yeah we might as well go further into disassembling this TV all the way down to the LEDs. Okay, okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to check uh, see if, it, if there's any voltage coming up on the LED socket. Uh, if it is that means that and it, it goes up and comes back down that that's our problem um, everything else should be working except for the LEDs are lighting up which means we have a problem with have a problem with one or more of the LEDs inside um, now this board because they use the same board the same screw for the back cover as they do the board I'm just going to screw these two screws on each end back down okay these are grounding screws obviously uh, before we fire it up just to make sure everything is grounded properly and I'm going to put my meter I'm going to plug my I plug my LED socket back into our power supply or main board whatever you want to call it and and I ground it this one the chassis now you can also I know sometimes you see me put I've got the positive lead on the uh, positive wire here and a lot of times you see me do it like this uh, it's best to try it both ways because uh, a lot of times it depends on how the actual strip is grounded okay uh, basically it's just a strip it's just you know it's pretty much isolated so uh, I did try it the other way with sticking this in here but I'm gonna get a more accurate reading going grounding this to chassis ground okay instead of sticking it in the white wire socket and I'm actually going to plug it in okay I've got it plugged in and it jumped up to 46 volts okay I don't see any backlight and I'm going to turn it on hit the power lights flashing jump up to 55 volts and still nothing okay so that pretty much gives me an idea see now it's going back down see or was it i don't know what's going on but uh, mm -hmm. light still flashing i wish the light stops flashing okay it stopped flashing and we're still at 57 volts okay i'm just gonna put this in the other side so uh, might be a feedback reading I'm not sure but either way um, we know that it is trying that the actual board or TV 
is trying to light up the LEDs, but we're not getting any backlight. And so it's safe to say that I'm going to hit, go ahead and try to take this bad baby apart um, and see if we can get at least get to the actual LEDs. I don't know. They may not want you to fix this TV because this looks kind of, I got the screws out, but it's not budging. So let me work, work with this for a minute and we'll see what happens. Okay, after all that work, I finally figured out. <coughs> I even pried the screen. I'm sorry, the outer bezel. Up. Uh, to see if there were any screws under the screen, but then I thought about it, I said, no, that can't be right. But actually this, you have to squeeze this, and, it, and the top part of this, if you squeeze it, it comes back, and it comes out like that. And this, this, these are my speakers in here, so I'm gonna disconnect that. And also my power button. Okay, make sure I don't pull anything. And that's kind of way I'm gonna have to work this off. Okay, I finally got this off. Um, evidently, just to keep, once you get the top part of loose here, and it comes out like this, you have to just keep playing around with it. Look in there, and uh, they really didn't want this to come off at all, uh, looks like. And as you can see, something broke right here. You have to break the clips. So I'm gonna plug, this is my Wi-Fi module. So my Wi-Fi module is located on the back. The Wi-Fi module. This is our power button and, and standby light assembly. That's the actual light in front. And so I'm gonna just unplug it from right here. Okay. And so we got and you see these little clips on the bottom. They actually had to break before they would come off. Okay, so as you can see. They really don't want anybody going in here. If they do, uh, they just want you to try to do it so you can destroy the TV or destroy the screen, which hopefully I didn't do. Um, okay, so now we should be able to take the outer bezel off. And before I even do that, I'm actually going to select some tape here. I'm going to disconnect this. This is my LDVS cable. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to disconnect it from right here. Okay, so that'll be on the safe side. Disconnect that. Okay, take this tape off of here. Off of our... tape off just in case um, and then we also have some clips right here holding on this driver board or oh, this T-Con board I mean and so we'll just get some pliers or some needle nose, some needle nose pliers and kind of squeeze those out. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip this around. I'm just gonna matter of fact, I'm just gonna put these back in these little things there. I'm gonna actually flip it on its back and pull the outer bezel off. And then we should be free and clear, hopefully. Okay, so I had the TV flipped over, uh, trying to take the outer bezel off, uh, but I noticed that the bottom part was stuck. So I flipped it back around on his face, very carefully, and this is what I noticed. Look at this. They have the actual bottom part of the bezel clipped. <laughs> There's actually a clip right here, right? And there's one on the other side too. So, man, TCL must not know who they're messing with, right? We're about to get this baby apart. So, I'm going to attempt to pull this off some kind of way. Come 
Come on, baby. Wow. Okay, now I got those two little clips out, right? there. You're gonna have to kind of set it up, I guess, and just pull this. It's, it's still clipped with these little plastic tabs. Just pull it out, and as you can see, it comes right off. Be careful the screen doesn't fall out or lean, lean it out so you don't crack it. So I kind of got it on the angle here to keep the screen in. I'm just gonna just do it like that all the way down. And I forgot to get this bezel off. Just stick something in my under there. I actually use, um, where you at? This is my favorite prior to who. This one works miracles. I love this. Uh, number one, because it's metal, okay, and it won't break like those plastic ones. Uh, number two, because it's metal, and it's, you can actually sharpen it right here using a knife sharpener. You don't want it too sharp, but in case it gets dull or anything, and the, uh, the third reason, number three, why I like this is because it's metal. And if I happen to drop it, I can hear it, right? So, yep. So just take this and go around the outer bezel. And just kind of pry it up, you know, not, don't force it up because what's going to happen is, I accept this all the time and they still do it. If you try to force it up, what's going to happen is you're going to bend this part of the screen. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you're going to bend this part of the outer bezel and you're going to put pressure on the, on the screen. You're going to crack it, okay? So, Hopefully we haven't done that yet already by trying to get this uh, outer bezel off. And as you can see, it came right the fluck off, okay? Now, all I have to do now is, pull, is bring our driver board up, okay? And quite naturally, um, they're making that, okay, that's, that's cool. And I'm gonna, hopefully the screen can come up. Okay, and once we do that, we should be in good shape. Okay, the screen came right up. It wasn't glued, which I kind of expected almost to be glued to uh, this frame with all these rubber pieces right here. And so, and I didn't have to use any suction cups because it's only a 32 inch. If you're careful, just use your hand and just pick it up and just set it somewhere it's safe. Okay, um, I'm actually going to mark this. Diffuser screen, okay, right there. I'm going to mark the chassis. I'm going to mark this black piece too, just so I. No, okay. Okay, I have to take that off. But check this out. Looks like, oh, both screens are the same shape. They're actually made around these little rubber pieces, so they have a little cuts in them. Cool. I'm gonna keep these together. Uh, quite naturally, it's taped on one side. No big deal. Okay. And it looks like, looks like maybe downhill from here. Hopefully, let's see how easy this comes off. I want to mark the paper? Yeah, quite naturally, we gotta take these rubber things off to get to the paper. That's crazy, but I don't know what. Okay, let's make sure we know how this goes back on. Okay, so this is the black. So the black and the gray. There's two grays diagonal with each other, and black and black are diagonal with each other. And I'm gonna mark this one. You know, this one goes in the bottom, and this is the thicker one also. I'm gonna mark this that that goes in the bottom. Okay, also. Okay, and it's kind of weird how to get this. It's kind of overlapping right there, but I guess we know now I put the paper on first, we put it back together, and then put these rubber brackets on. So I'm actually going to try to pull these off, make sure I know how they go back on. Now, real. I don't know what that was. Is that a screw? Oh, okay. Oh, there's some tabs right here, no big deal. Let's go to the other side, squeeze those out. Man, I can't believe it. They, didn't, they didn't put the tabs up under the circuit board. Get it right here in the open where I can just squeeze it. Right out. Hopefully. Here we go. Okay. Voila! We are down to our 
LEDs. Can you believe that? Do you believe that? Finally. As you can see, just two strips. Should be pretty much straightforward. I'm actually going to disconnect my, if I can find the test points here. The actual connections are right here in the middle. So obviously that would be our test points here. And I guess they come in through here on the power supply board. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect my power supply board. Can disconnect my LEDs from the power supply or the one little one board wonder power supply main board all that kind of stuff on one board and then let me see that's one line how are they doing this okay so we got one line going I'm not even gonna pull this tape off but I'm gonna one line going here and or is it being split anyway let's just I'm just gonna unplug it from right here just so I can test it maybe it's like uh, day three now <laughs> I had to stop working on this because it was a 32 inch, so I figured it wouldn't take me long to, longer than an hour, but I had to go to work. And so, um, man, this TV is like, uh, this TV, they make a TV harder than trying to pull two fat girls out of a burning building. So, anyway, uh, I checked the, remember we were getting that 50 volts on the actual plug, on the power supply, on the LED plug, and I saw a little backlight. Well, I'm going to go right to the LEDs. I can go right on the plug here. It is marked uh, minus and positive. But there's actually, if you go back to this capacitor right here, and it is marked plus. And this actually lights up. Okay. And the blue there, 25. Jumping around slightly. It's, it's stable at 27. 0.2 volts. Okay. All right. And I'm going to go to the other one, the next one here. And this one comes on a little slow, especially this one by my my checker here. And this one's reading at 27.3 volts or 2 volts. So that's weird. And I did actually I can't show you on camera, but um, cause I, I can't hold it and show you, but I did actually check, um, the actual, from the plug here, and they both, maybe I can check it like this, let's see, they both lit up, both sides, let's see here, no, it's not lighting up, what's going on here, okay, I'm lighting it from the actual, plug going to both strips and I'm holding it on there and as you can see all the LEDs are lit okay and I'm getting a ring of 54 volts 54.7 volts okay so why aren't they lighting up okay my thing is I'm getting the 50 volts <clears throat> when I turn the TV set on, I mean, I'm getting the 50 volts to the LEDs, and it just stays there. Usually, it'll come up, and then it'll slowly start going back down, the voltage, if there's a bad LED. So, let me see what's really going on here, okay? Okay, so what I did is I actually got my uh, my speaker assembly with my power button and stuff on. Just, I just want to fire it up, fire the TV set up, then I'm going to unplug it, this wire here. Okay, I want to make sure the light comes on, the light is right at the bottom. And I'm going to turn my TV set on, turn on the power. Okay. Light is on. I'm going to hit it. Should start flashing. Okay. And like I said, I'll show you guys again that uh, 50 volts or well, whatever is constant here at this plug. Um, how did I do that? Did I go right to the plug or did I go to ground? Let's see. Meters on DC volts, 43 volts, we'll go right to ground, 46 volts, okay, all right, up to 50 volts now, remember just like last time, come on, and let me go over here to the feedback line, and it's like 7 volts, fluctuating around hopefully you can see that on camera okay so now I'm going to do is just I'm going to unplug this wire okay set this to the side 
and I'm going to flip my TV around. Be very careful not to touch the circuit board while the TV is on. Okay, like I was saying before, I got some rule interrupted with a phone call. I want to turn my TV around, make sure my LEDs are plugged into the power supply. Voltage should be still coming across. Okay, turn it around. I'm going to take my new toy here. <laughs> a little cheap meter I bought. Um, it lights up so maybe you guys can see it better on video. But anyway, I'm going to check my voltage right here on the plug. Okay, let's see here. Is it still on? Should be. Okay, 33 volts there. Go over here. 10 volts. There's our 51 volts, okay. It's our 33 volts coming off. So basically this wire is, the red wire is going there, here. Remember there are only two wires coming from the power supply board, right? So the red wire is going down to this one. Then this loops around. The feedback wire is going back to this one. And then coming back to the TV. Okay, so basically these are strips, like the strips that you see like the, like on the bigger TVs where there's, there's two strips, there's one strip. But it comes apart in two, basically the same way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to check my voltage going across each LED, if I can do that. Now each LED has individual checkpoints, looks like. So I'm just going to start right here. But there's another way I can do this. I can just ground this on the chassis, okay, kind of way. Hold it there, or clip it on, or whatever. And now since these are, this is, the, remember the TV is still on, still plugged in. We still have our 50 volts here. On one of these pins, 38 volts and 50 volts down here on this one, I believe. I'm not sure where we at. Yeah, 51 volts. Okay. So, um, hopefully you can see that. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is go across each LED and I should have a difference of about 5 to 6 volts. Okay. And so, that, that is the voltage drop across each LED. I'll start with this one. I'll just show you how it works. Okay. So, that one is at 19 volts. So, the next one... Um, okay, that's 19, that's at 14, that's about 5 volts difference, okay, we'll go across the next one, that's 10, okay, about 5 volts difference, okay, um, we'll go across here, it's probably going to start a new pattern over here on this side of the plug, that's 33 volts, okay, so this should be about 30, uh, 38 maybe, 37, or, or it goes down, okay, 28, we'll say 28 and... 33, okay, that's about 5 volts difference, okay, next one, 23, okay, that's 23, the other one was 28, so that's about 5 volts difference, and this one at 19, also about 5 volts difference, okay, we'll start with our next line, okay, we'll go right here on this dot, okay, 42 volts, 37, okay, about 5 volts difference, 33, about four or five volts difference, right? Okay, I'll go right here. 51, okay, and I'll go over here. So, after a little searching around, I did figure out, um, decided to check my FET. This is the FET right here that powers up the LED wire. As you can see, I have my scope lead on it. And there was no signal at the gate, okay, to turn the actual FET on. I mean, the, 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 the voltage is there, but it has to be uh, driven uh, through the gate of this FET. So that's the only thing I can see. And like I said, I do have the, let me zoom out for you. I do have the, as you can see, the TV is on. And that's our drive signal, um, which looks kind of crappy. I'm going to. And let's see, it's running about 22 hertz, kilohertz, okay. And what I'm going to do here is just, let's see here, um, where is it at? I'm going to just hit the DVM. It's only about 19 millivolts, okay. And as you can see, um, that looks like shit, okay? So, 
So what I began to do, and I will just show you one time, there is 50 volts. If you look at my meter on the actual um, drain, which is this little tab also right here. Oops, am I getting on volts? Okay. Okay, there's 52 volts. Um, so, what I actually did was look at my gate driver circuit or uh, backlight protection IC, which is this right here. Um, I looked the numbers up, and of course, I couldn't find a pinout for that particular IC. Uh, anything that was close was either a, um, an 8 pin or IC or something totally different. So, um, I did notice what I do with my pointer. I'm always losing stuff. I just had it in my hand. Okay, right here. I did notice right here this resistor. And this capacitor uh, next to the FET, okay, this actually, I think it's coming, this is the VCC coming through here. Um, it was just 12 volts on this side of the resistor, and on this side of the resistor, there's only 2 volts. But the thing is, it's supposed to be reading 22 ohms, um, but it's not. It's reading like 100 ohms, and the capacitor is also reading like 35 ohms to ground, okay. This side is connected to ground. So, I be, I'm beginning to get really suspicious. So, what I'm going to probably do is just take off this capacitor and this resistor and see if that capacitor is open, I mean, the resistor is open, or if the capacitor is still shorted, or it could be this IC right here. I did read about four pins going to ground. Like I said, I couldn't find the pin out on that part number for some reason. Um, I couldn't find a data sheet on that particular, with that same part number. And the ones that I found were like 0B35. That's a one. So that's what I found out. That's a one that's like halfway erased. It's probably burnt up. <laughs> and then I think it's a TQP. And the only one I found was a 33501, a 510CP, and all that. But I couldn't find anything close to it. So what I'm going to do is just remove this resistor and maybe capacitor and see if there's any problems with it out of the circuit okay guys that capacitor uh will seem good but this resistor here um there was reading it says it was it was reading about 50 ohms but on the actual resistor itself the old one it actually says two two zero that's 22 ohms. That's 2, 2, and the third number is the um, uh, multiplier. And so 0. So it's 22 ohms. And that one that one there up under my microscope was actually reading 54 or 55 ohms. And so I just went ahead and found another 22 ohm resistor from another board. It was a little bigger, so I had to scrape the trace. And I put the capacitor back. And I fired the TV setup. Okay. And as you can see, that is R R18, I think. There's, I, I believe that's what it is. There's another R2, but I think that's for the one that's empty. Uh, up under the solder blob, I got there, right? So that says 22R0, so that's the, the multiplier again. So it's 22 ohms. Anyway, 22 ohms. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. You're going to see the backlights hopefully come on. I'm going to turn my main, my, my main power on. And... I'm going to hit the power button. Voila. That's it. And I have my scope up to my gate on my... On my FET there. Right there. Okay. And as you can see, we now have a drive signal. It went dim for a second. There we go. Okay, and as you can see, when the backlights come on, it goes dim for a second, it comes back on. So that's it, boy. That's it, guys. So, um, as you can see, looks like we solved our problem. Um, let's see, yeah, we solved our problem there. That drive signal is actually running at 93 kilohertz, it's about 0.1 volts. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's about, uh, yeah, a half a volt, 0.5, uh, uh, 500 millivolts, whatever. 
So, with that being said, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to show you how to put this thing back together, but that's what technicians have to go through, okay, when it comes to those nightmare repairs, right? So, first thing you check, if you get a TV like this with the no backlight problem and all the backlights check good, check that one resistor, okay? And the reason I saw it was because it was a little dark over there, and I knew that that was the... Um, the LED drive, uh, what do they call it, protection IC or uh, driver IC to drive the actual FET that actually drives the LED strips. Okay, another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to this FET here and see what the voltage is. Okay, as you can see, it is now reading approximately 42 volts instead of the 50 that we were getting before, remember? And it's just like if you guys are old school like me, used to work on the older big back TVs, horizontal output on the collector of the horizontal output transistor, you would have should have about 135 volts. If you had 180, 170, that usually meant that, that you wasn't getting any horizontal drive on the base of the transistor. Same here, we're getting a high reading and we weren't getting any drive. That's why the reading was so high. Now I'm actually gonna go to the resistor that we replaced and let's ch check on both sides of that um, where are we at okay okay once I'm getting 12 volts and on the other side I'm getting 12 volts again okay eleven volts and on one other side I'm going back to the other side twelve volts so that obviously is the voltage that we're getting like a half a volt drop across that resistor almost a volt so that is actually the resistor that we need for that IC to work um, to, for the VCC for that particular IC right there. Okay, so one thing we learned from this is that if you have a backlight problem, you check all of the LED strips or you check the LEDs and they come up good and the voltage and you go to check the voltage and it's just staying there, right? And the LEDs still are lighting up. Uh, most likely you have a problem with whatever's uh, you know with driving the FET for the B plus for the LED strips okay uh, there's no drive there so like I said in this business you learn something every day so guys I think that's about it um, uh, there's something else I want to show you guys I don't know but like I said just make sure that you do have that drive signal and as you see I was, I was able to pull up my um, This also has a frequency, a frequency counter on it, and so I don't know what I was reading before, but I just go right here, frequency counter, and as you can see, it's running at uh, 70, approximately 70 kilohertz is the frequency for the um, the LED FET driver, okay, for the gate driver, or, or for the gate, what I'm trying to say, right? 70 hertz signal going to the gate of that FET to drive the LED strips. All right, guys, I think I've covered about everything, hopefully, on this particular Nightmare TV. So until then, big dog out.